Well, good morning, church. It's good to be, it's a delight to be here with the Lord's body in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. We are continuing our series on joy on the other side. And this morning, our text is Psalm 84. I would invite you to turn there in your Bibles. If you do not have a Bible, there are pew Bibles adjacent to you. Please grab one. And if you are able, please stand for the reading of God's word. How lovely are your dwelling places, O Yahweh of hosts. My soul has longed and even fainted for the courts of Yahweh. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the bird has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she sets her young at your altars, O Yahweh of hosts my King and my God. How blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. How blessed is the man whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. Passing through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The early rain also wraps it up with blessings. They go from strength to to strength. Each one of them appears before God in Zion. O oh, Yahweh, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O oh God of Jacob. See our shield, O oh God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather choose to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For Yahweh God is a sun and a shield. Yahweh gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk blamelessly. O Yahweh of hosts, how blessed is the man who trusts in you. Father God, we thank you for your word. We ask this morning that you would open it up to us, that you would open our eyes so that we may see the lovely place of your dwelling and we may abide with you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. What's your favorite room in your house? Imagine it for a moment. Where do you like to go and to just sit down and chill? To veg? To waste the hours of the day and not worry about it at all? What is it about this place? that brings you so much delight. Perhaps it's comfortable furniture, cozy blankets and pillows. Perhaps it's your huge entertainment center. The living room is my favorite spot. It's where I come to lounge after both exhausting and exhilarating days. The left corner of the couch just envelopes me. There's an array of verdant plants to my left and a rustic coffee table that holds my drink within arm's reach. The front door is to my right and the sun splatters rays of color on the wall at golden hour of the day. It's so easy to dwell in this room, to sit down and stay there, just because there's so much delight 
so much strength, so much security in this place. As I've just noted, the walls adorned with beauty, the comfy furniture that supports me, the doors and locks to my right that shield me from intruders. I really, really enjoy this room, inhabiting it, sitting in it, staying a while. I enjoy it. I would like to think it gives me joy. This morning, we hear a psalm of praise for a particular place, a place that is so special because it brings a plethora of joy to the psalmist, a joy that can be found in no other place whatsoever, a place that the psalmist would be willing to journey through desiccated valleys and ascend the highest mountain. This particular place he refers to is the tabernacle of Yahweh, Yahweh's house. A place that brings this kind of joy because Yahweh has settled down there. Quite literally, Yahweh sits there. It is a place so holy that our psalmist earnestly wants to dwell that he's willing to come within, even if he can only come within, a few yards of it. His body pants for it. And this is no mere poetic embellishment. His flesh yearns to sit there. So much so, his private parts long to be there. The desire is so strong to sit there, to sit down in this place and to inhabit it. He longs for his body and this place to become one. It's a joyous place because it's a secure place. And if you note all of the designations throughout the psalm, this is because Yahweh, God of hosts, lives there. The Lord of armies, the faithful, militant God who shows up at appointed times of trouble and wages war for his people. And he always wins. Indeed, in Yahweh's house, one is secure. It's a fortress that once was conquered in the name of Yahweh, but now one inhabits. It's a castle of defense against his enemies. It's a place where Yahweh dwells and his people appear before him a holy mountain in the holiest city. There is so much intimacy here. Yahweh lends his ear to his people, and quite literally, according to the psalmist, he cups his hands around his ear so that he can hear more carefully and critically. He lends his ear diligently and tests and proves and weighs what he hears. He hears their prayers. He listens to their singing. Indeed, this house is so precious that the psalmist is willing to be a doorkeeper just so he could be close to it. To admit others if he cannot be admitted. To guard it if he is unable to enjoy it. To stand outside if he's unable or unpermitted to come in. He knows of no other place where such joy can be found as in God's house. 
His terms are clear, though. Those who are blessed by Yahweh's house are those who dwell in it. Like Yahweh does. They sit down and remain, remain like Yahweh does. They settle into the land and settle down with his family like Yahweh does. They marry themselves to this place like Yahweh does. A dweller doesn't just visit. They don't come and go as they please. And when they're there, they don't stand in anticipation of leaving. Their bodies don't long to sit or stand in other places. They pilgrimage to stay. They sit down for a while. They linger as long as they can. They long to just be there. Our psalm speaks of a God who doesn't hide or hover. He doesn't want to be concealed, nor does he want to be distant. He wants to make himself known and wants to plant himself among his people. Locally present and dwelling with his people. And this is evident and prevalent all throughout Scripture. In the cool of day, Yahweh plants himself in a garden with Adam and Eve. He goes before the Israelites in a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of night, or a pillar, by, pillar of fire by night. He descends upon Mount Sinai as a glory cloud to meet with Moses. He instructs his leaders to have him make a sanctuary an Ark of the Covenant where he will meet with Moses at, at appointed times. He tells his people to build a house for him, which becomes the tabernacle that he fills. He then gives instructions to King David to make a more permanent house for him, the temple. And when the temple is destroyed and his people are in exile for their abominations, he assures the prophet Ezekiel, that he will still be present to them, though they are scattered and dispersed. This is a God who despises distance, who is passionate about placing himself among his people. To such great depths and heights, he is willing to take on their condition. Indeed, he takes up flesh, even unto death. This is a God who descends to dwell among his people, to inhabit their space and their time. And this is a God who eventually will get what he wants. He will dwell with his people in everlasting presence and placement as the Apostle John prophesies to us in Revelation. He will bring his holy city, the new Jerusalem, down from heaven, and he will dwell with his people. He will sit down with them for eternity in the city. Time and time again, we hear of a Lord, if you will, looking for a living room looking for a place to dwell with his people, not just in their hearts, but in a house where he can hear their praises in the same place as they are. And he can, and he does do that. This day, this church is his house. We are his body, and our bodies are his temple. But this building is his house. You see, when we gather and we invoke his name, when his word is preached and his body and blood are administered and consumed, 
He is present with us. He dwells with us. If you're like me, we tend to think that our homes are generators of joy. That our vacation trips are distillers of peace. And that our security comes through guns. But the psalmist pre presents a different picture. Joy and security is not found in our homes or on vacation or in a shooting range. They're found in the house of the Lord. Joy is found in pews, praising God with his people, not on co cozy couches with coffee tables. Lounging on my couch in my living room will never bring me as much joy as plopping down in a pew next to you and praising him. My coffee table will never hold as much weight or meaning as the Lord's table when we commune together. The reason many of us don't have joy or wish we had more of it is because we're looking in all the wrong places. We're going to everyone else's house, including our own, instead of his, or more than his. And then when we're in his house, we're too busy to stay, or we're, we're in a rush to leave. There is no time to grow in grace and glory like our psalmist speaks of. Our excuses are endless, aren't they? If we're being honest with ourselves. I can't make it Sunday morning because I have to take my daughter to a travel softball game. I can't participate in Wednesday night heights because the boys have Cub Scouts. We can't sing in choir because we're taking a yoga class that evening. It's no wonder we lack joy. We're hardly ever in his courts. The birds are here more than we are. We can't expect to receive God's blessings like the psalmist refers to when we're under everyone else's roof except his. We can't come to his house once a week or once a month and expect to grow in grace and glory. My friends, are you looking for joy? Are you looking for security and strength, abiding strength? There is good news. There is very good news. And God's word is clear on this. Come to the house of the Lord. Make the trip through the valleys and ascend the mountain of inconvenience and distraction and priority to his dwelling place. Come and sing psalms of praise in the pews with his people. Stay and sit a while. Linger as long as you can. For it is here that you will find true joy. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord in Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and you have sent your spirit to be with us. And by doing so, you have become more present to us. Lord, we long for your presence. And we look forward to gathering in this space as your body and calling upon you, calling your name. 
Lend your ear to us. Give us your joy. May we conform more and more to your image. May we look more and more like you. Oh Lord, prompt our heart to be here, to make our way through the valleys of life and ascend to the mountain of where you dwell with us when we gather in your name and we praise you. And indeed, Lord, may we honor and glorify you and praise you in and through everything we do. For it is in your name we pray.